in a world where the clouds taste like cotton candy and the winds whisper secrets of adventure. There was one man who danced with the skies like no other. What man you ask? Wiley Popes, like a bat out of hell. This dude was a freaking air pirate, becoming the private pilot for oil man F.C. Hall. He flew a Lockheed Vega named after Hall's daughter, Winnie Mae. And then what? Two years later, two years, he got another one, two, like some kind of clone or something. This one was Winnie Mae too, another Winnie Mae. And this post dude, has a fever in his eyes. He wants to race, he wants to break records, and break records he did. First, he had to convince Hall to allow him to enter the Los Angeles to Chicago men's air derby so he could attempt to break the cross country speed record. So he wins, right? And that just feeds the beast. This cross country thing, that's just a warm up. First country, next world. So he's talking about some German balloon Zeppelin that needs a good smackdown. Let me explain. There's a around the world record by some guy named Hugo in something called a Zeppelin that was 21 days, five hours, and 31 minutes. And posted it under nine days. Forget the stock market crashing. Newspapers ain't got room for that no more. It's all Wiley Post, man. Wiley Post. Extra, extra, read all about it. It's Wiley Post. But fame ain't worth the paper it's printed on. And Post knows this. He's the king. Uh-huh. But cash ain't flowing. What's he do? He tries to convert this newfound fame into dollar dollar bills, y'all. So he flies again. Around the world he goes again but alone. He buys the Winnie Mae from Hall, and since he's not a navigator, he gets a first-gen autopilot and a new army radio compass, whatever that is. I ain't never heard of an army radio compass. I mean, I can understand a first-gen autopilot, but not a new army radio compass. What the hell is that? Apparently, it's the latest thing. And he added a Smith hollow steel variable pitch propeller. This is madness, trusting his life to some gizmos no one ever tried before. Robot co-pilot, propellers out of Star Wars, well, fortunately for Post, the equipment performed superbly, and he succeeded by cutting his record by nearly a day. Upon his return, he was celebrated. They had a parade, but I know he was thinking, what's next? Altitude. Can't go down. Might as well go up. Then, the real crazy starts. How's he gonna beat this record without a pressurized cabin? Well, my friends, where there's a will, there's a way. He knew Winnie Mae couldn't handle the thin air, and he didn't want to be squished like a bug. So he hooks up with BF Goodridge, a tire company of all things. And they cook up this crazy pressure suit, like something out of a sci-fi flick. Post puts it on, straps himself to the Winnie Mae, and blasts off. Post attempted multiple times in 1935 to set the solo high altitude transcontinental speed record, but none were successful. One particular attempt on March 15th, however, was noteworthy. Wearing the pressurized suit and flying at an altitude of more than 30,000 feet, Post flew the Winnie Mae, now equipped with a supercharger and jettisonable landing gear, from Burbank, California to Cleveland, a distance of 2,035 miles, in seven hours and 19 minutes. At times, it reached 340 miles per hour. He proved that the higher you go, the faster you go. And that buddy of his, Rogers, man, he was always talking up Post. Post and Rogers, those two were like brothers. And Rogers, with just his words, made Post a legend in newspapers. Then, 1935 rolls around. Rogers is burning out, and Post has this itch to fly again. So they go off on some crazy joyride. Alaska, Russia, who knows? But that Winnie Mae, she's an old man. Post tries to fix her up. Wings from this plane, floats from that one. It's a flying death trap. Up north they go, engine coughs, and that's all she wrote. Two icons gone in a blink. But hey, that's fame, right? What burns bright burns out fast. The suit, the helmet, the busted out parts, all in a museum now. Like Post and Rogers never even left us. And as we learned in the movie The Sandlot, there's heroes and there's legends. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. May your skies always be blue. There's heroes and there's legends. Heroes get remembered, but legends never die.